We've all been there. You buy a cutting edge or even perhaps a quite basic gadget, get it home, take it out of the box, and then blow me to turn it on. You need the codes for the nuclear button. The manual is no help at all, and the English section makes about as much sense as the Chinese bit. But in 20 minutes, you're tearing your hair out because it's asking you to set the date, and there's just no telling how to do it. Gadgets and their manuals can be a nightmare, but now there's a man who wants to solve all that, and he's with me. So I'm just going to start by asking, why is it that manuals are just so bad? I think one of the reasons is there is this perception that people don't read user manuals, thus not a lot of time needs to be spent on developing quality user manuals. However, it is just a perception that people don't read user manuals. In fact, if you look at it in more detail, people do actually read user manuals, they just don't read them. Like, for example, they would read a novel. They don't start on page one and read consecutively through the pages until the last page. Rather, when they have a problem or when they're not sure what to do, they'll dip into the relevant section of the manual to find out what to do. And then it's that explaining what to do that I've always found not very good. What is it that firms and companies that develop these manuals and obviously the, the, you know they've managed to make this amazing gadget that can do mm. all sorts of things and yet the book to explain how to do it is just seems to fall so far short. In fact what you say now is the very reason why I wrote to this book. I remember a couple of years ago I had listened to a Radio 4 program called How to Write an Instruction Manual right. and the presenter of the manual had actually lamented the fact we've got all this great new technology available to us but the user manuals that come with many of these products are actually not that great after all and when i listened to that um, program i thought this ties in with my personal experience and with research i had been doing into user manuals at that time i should write a book to try and improve the situation because you're a lecturer at the university of portsmouth yes how, I'm does, actually... how does one even think this is the thing i'm going to do my research on user manuals. This is, this is it. This is going to be my niche topic. <laughs> well, it was actually from personal experience. Um, it was actually two years ago and I was buying a present for somebody and I bought one of these electronic photo frames. Yeah. And it was quite a good quality one, I hasten to add. And I gave it to this person um, and they just couldn't work out how to use it. And they showed me this user manual and I couldn't understand how to use it either. And I realised, well, why don't I use my research to actually try and improve the quality of these user manuals? And the so result is this is book. This book. So you've yes. written this book, and so it's basically a user manual about how to write user, user manuals. Manual. Right. So, yeah. so what are the key points, what are the salient points that mm. you think would make user manuals easier to understand? Well, Joy, I don't want to give the impression that all user manuals are bad. No. In fact, there are some good user manuals out there. And what I've done is I have taken all the best practice features from the good user manuals that are out there and make, made them into a series of very simple rules that um, companies, or more particularly their technical writers, can follow when they're actually writing user manuals. And so what, what kind if of I give you one example yeah, go, give then, us some uh, to give you a really simple example, so most technical products will have buttons that you press. Yes. Okay. Now, one of the rules that I have got is when you write a user manual, use the same word always to mean the same thing. Don't use different words to mean the same thing or the same word to mean different things. But if we take, for example, pressing a key on a keyboard. Do you press the key? Do you push the key? Do you um, tap the key? Do you strike the key? Right, okay. And if, if somebody's using in page one, press the key, and in using page three, tap the key, does that mean tapping is different from pressing? Just, right. It's a simple <laughs> example, but it's that kind of thing. Unless people are consistent with their word choices, then they're going to make it slightly more difficult for people to understand how to do what they need to do with the product. So one of the 30 rules that I have developed is to use words consistently in user manuals because unfortunately a lot of companies don't do that. And I think it causes huge amounts of frustration, especially for people, I mean, you know, I consider myself reasonably young and reasonably tech savvy, but it, and it's just a nightmare for people, for example, my parents or grandparents, and they've got a new thing. They want to be able to use it desperately, 
but then figuring out how to do it is just so difficult. Do you think there needs to be a kind of industry standard for this? Or? Do you, I, I don't know if we could ever go as so far as to have an industry standard, but what I would really hope is, particularly smaller companies who maybe don't have the resources to commit to spending a lot of money on user manuals is to buy a book like this one and try and encourage your, the technical writers either to use all the rules that I suggest they use or even adapt them to their personal circumstances. Because I read a couple of years ago a great article and not talking about road rage but talking about read rage when actually people get so frustrated at not understanding their user manual they either throw the user manual or the product the user <laughs> manual is about against the wall. I'm pretty sure I have been there. Dr. Crabb from the University of Portsmouth, thank you very much for coming in and thank telling us about your work. Thank you. Thank you.